recording now. All right. Happy Halloween, everybody. If you can't tell because of the blur, I'm a, I'm a dragon tonight. Um, and I just did this just to say happy Halloween and to scare the dogs and it worked. So um, I'm going to take that off so you can see me. <laughs> it's fun, right? We got we to gotta have some fun with some Halloween. <clears throat> anyway, hi, you guys. Welcome to the Team Fireball weekly call. If you don't know me, my name is Christy Simpson, and I'm a Pro 5 here with Life Vantage. And I am so excited to be sharing with you guys tonight. Um, I've done a little bit of research for tonight's call. And um, so you'll have to bear with me because I don't know everything that I'm about to share tonight, but <laughs> I'm going to do my best. And um, what else? Oh, yes. Announcement tonight. Tonight is the last time you that you can get the um, cheap tickets for um, Elite Academy that's coming up in March in New Orleans. Um, after tonight, the ticket prices go up. So you can get it for $99 uh, through tonight. So grab those tickets if you haven't gotten them, you guys, because um, the price just goes up from here from from now on, you want to get them as cheap as possible to, to limit your expenses. It just makes sense, right? <clears throat> so um, what else? Oh, yeah, it's the last day of the month. <laughs> it's October 31st. So check your, um, your volume before you go to bed. Check and see if anybody on your team is um, close to rank advancing or... Um, <clears throat> or gonna rank advance again, or not rank advance again, but hold their rank. And that's a big deal too, right? So um, keep tabs on that, check that before you, you head to bed. And um, so guys, you know, I, I love my personal development stuff. And um, I think it was you, Jenny, who shared about the, the Andy Andrews book called The Seven Decisions. And I hadn't read that one. <laughs> so um, earlier, or probably at the beginning of the weekend, I went ahead and got it on Audible. And I started listening to it. And I was thinking, okay, that's, that's what I'm going to cover for Monday night's call is I'm going to listen to this book and I'm going to cover the seven decisions. But you guys, he got um, into one of the decisions. And I honestly, I haven't written it down. I don't know which one it was. But he was talking about reading books and how important it is for us in our business to be reading books. In general, you know, as a human being, it's good to read books. And he made a, a really funny little comment that kind of made me giggle. He said, you know, when you are a student in school and you read two books a year, you're considered slow. But if you're an adult and you read two books a year, you're considered average. He said, why do we stop learning when we get out of school? We should not be stopping learning. We need to continue learning. We need to be reading as many books as we possibly can and um, <clears throat> challenge yourself to read more than two books a year. And I admit, since I got out of college, picking up a paper book is next to impossible for me. I just can't do it. I can't take the time to sit and, and read. So that's why I found Audible. And I'll be going over some other um, apps besides Audible later, but I just wanted to, to let you know, I now I checked my, um, my library on Audible. It says I've been a member since 2010, but honestly, I was a member before that because um, way back when it very first started, you had to burn the books onto CDs. And I thought, this is a great idea. I can listen to my books in, in the car because I had an hour and a half long commute each way to my job at the EPA. And it was ridiculously stupid sitting in the car for that long without doing something like listening to audiobooks. So it was way before 2010, but I digress. I, I checked my library, you guys. I have 335 books in my Audible library. <laughs> I was like, that's more books than, that's more than the physical books I have. And I thought I had a lot of physical books, you guys. 
I, I don't throw away books. So 335 books in 12, almost 13 years. Pretty good. Anyway, I don't expect you guys to go and, and if, you, if you can't afford an Audible <clears throat> subscription, I'm not going to say you need to go out and get an Audible subscription. So it's okay. There's a couple more that are free and I'll get into that later. But first, I'm going to share my screen and we're going to talk about the product of the night. I'm so excited because, <clears throat> well, maybe I can share my screen. There it is. <clears throat> okay, so the wellness, you guys. We've got a brand new limited time only of the daily wellness. We got to try it when we were at Global. Um, I know that you guys all tried it. It was so delicious. It's lemon ginger, and they you could you could drink it either hot. They had it hot or or cold, and I drank it hot. It was really good. I am so excited to be getting my lemon ginger uh, daily wellness, which I'll be ordering tomorrow since it's November 1st. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but I'd like to talk a little bit about, about that. Daily wellness, ever since it came out, you guys, I have not gone a day without my daily wellness. I have it every morning to drink with, um, I mix it with my prebiotic and it it mixes really, really well together. Oh, Carol, I'm so jealous you got yours today. That's awesome. I'm jealous. <clears throat> but you guys, this stuff is amazing. I was watching some videos and there are videos in the app that are specifically about daily wellness. And uh, what you could do is you go in the search bar and you just type in daily wellness. And um, there's one really cute video that's about eight minutes long. And it's one of the customer service reps who is talking about it. She's really cute. And she, it's like an, an FAQ. It's a Q and A session, like the frequently asked questions she answers. And it's, it's really good. So if you get a chance to check that out, go, go watch it. Um, it was helpful. And then she says, if you really want the science, go watch the Brian Dixon one. <laughs> Just go watch the Brian Dixon one. He gets into the science. So I'm not going to get into the science, even though, you know, I love the science. Um, I'm just going to talk, talk to you about these uh, ingredients and what, you know, they, they told us when it first came out, five to thrive. It's five ingredients, five to thrive. Um, and that's zinc, vitamin C, vitamin D, elderberry, and fermented yeast extract. And it's that fermented yeast extract that's the that makes this stuff be considered the postbiotic. So that's really cool. We now have a prebiotic, we have a probiotic, and we have postbiotic using the daily wellness. Um, so each, let's see if I can get this to, here we go. Vitamin C, it's ascorbic acid. Um, it's an antioxidant. It assigns immune cells to do their specific job and it supports immune systems. And in the um, in that little video I watched, she said that vitamin C is the number one vitamin sold in America because we've been drilled. It's been drilled into Americans now for decades that you need vitamin C. You need vitamin C, and there's plenty to be found. Of course, not all vitamin C is is created equally. But moving right along, <laughs> vitamin. D is also in it. It's a nutrigenomic activator. It regulates around 2000 genes. It regulates the coding of immune proteins, which is cool. And it supports your, your immune system through nutrigenomic activation. Uh, next is the elderberry, which is awesome. And it, it gives it its wonderful flavor. Uh, antioxidant, it's high in vitamin C also. Um, it's a vitamin, multivitamin and fiber content. Uh, phytonutrients trigger immune cell signaling and it supports your total immune health. And that fermented yeast extract, it's proven to support immune strength. Postbiotic composed of proteins, fibers, polyphenols, vitamins, and much more. And it supports and strengthens all three systems of your overall immune system. 
And lastly, but not least, zinc. Zinc is responsible for binding DNA to activate genes. It is essential for cell division and growth, metabolism, skin rejuvenation and protection, and it supports overall immune health also. So this, this stuff, guys, is just, um, it's, it's really great for your daily um, proactive immune health. Um, that's another thing that she covered in the, that little video that I told you about. She says, <clears throat> it's much better to be proactive than reactive. And that's what the daily wellness is geared for. It's meant to be um, reactive after you get sick. It's meant to be proactive to keep you from getting sick. And, oh, sorry, in case you, shoot, <laughs> in case you missed it, get it while it's hot, the limited time only daily wellness flavor, lemon ginger. I am, it's, like I said, I'm so excited to, to get mine. And, okay, so the books thing, moving right along into the books. I did a little bit of research on, audiobook subscriptions. Sorry that Audible went off the screen. I don't know why. Um, Audible is the one, like I said, I, that I've been using now for over 12 years. It is $14.95 a month. That's what I've been paying. You get a, one credit a month, and it's generally one credit for equal one book. Um, so you can see after you know a little bit of time, you can really get uh, a large library going. But I did not know this until recently. If you have an Audible subscription, they have what's called Audible Plus, where there's a whole bunch of books that are available for free with that subscription. And I, if I had known that years ago, it would have been, it would have been incredible. I would have a lot more than 335 books in my Audible library if I had known. But <clears throat> better late than never. And um, I've I found quite a few helpful books, most of them um, sciency that I've been um, listening to for free. Thanks, Audible. Um, but I just wanted to, that's the first one that I'm going to talk about because that's the one I know most about. But these others, I've done a little bit of research. Abby mentioned Chirp. And Chirp is, there's no uh, subscription fee. It's a totally free app. Um, you can get really good deals on audiobooks through Chirp. And one of the um, websites that I was looking at today, it was a blog, and they were talking about, it's really good if you want to do Audible and Chirp, and you can have Audible, um, and when you run out of Audible books, <laughs> you can get uh, ones on Chirp that you're really looking for, for a good, for a good price. So I thought that was really cool. And um, if there's a surprising number of these apps out there that I didn't know about, and I thought that y'all should know. Um, next is Scribed. Now I heard about Scribed from Tara Wilson. Uh, she talked about it on more than one of her Zooms. And um, I had looked into it a few months ago after she first talked about it, but then didn't get back into it because, you know, Hey, I'm with Audible. I'm kind of kind of stuck on it, but it's really nice because you can get ebooks as well as the auto, Audible books so, or audio books. So that's awesome. And then it also says you can also look at magazines and sheet music. That was crazy, but it is a subscription, and it's uh, according to their website, like you see here, it's eleven ninety nine a month. Um, after the first free 30 days. Um, so that's a really cool option. Um, next is Libby. You guys, this looks amazing. Libby is free. All of the books on Libby are free. If you have a library card, that's all you need. And I thought that was the coolest thing. i would never heard of this before I started Googling about it yesterday. How awesome is that? You can, um, I watched a little trailer video today on Libby and it's, um, you can search, you can check out whatever, check out whatever audio, audiobook or um, ebook 
or whatever using using Libby. And I thought that was really cool. So if you don't want to pay or you can't pay for whatever reason, this is a great option. And I thought, man, everybody needs to know about this because who really has time to go to the library anymore and search through the card catalog? <laughs> is that even a thing anymore? Um, I think I might be dating myself. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm sorry, Alice. <laughs> She's cracking up at me. <laughs> card catalogs. I need to just shut up. Um, I'll just now. <laughs> okay, so for all of these, you need for this list. This is the list I've compiled so far. Um, the last few, no, the last one or two, um, I don't actually own because they were just suggested um, by people. I went and put it in alphabetical order. So yeah, it's not the last two. There's a couple in there that I don't own. Um, and most of these I have on Audible. <laughs> But let me tell you, you guys, this one is number one. I don't know if you can read it. It's called Network Marketing, A View from Venus by our very own Pro 10, Carrie Dickey. And I listened to this first on Audible, but I had to go and buy the, the, the paper book so that I could take notes in it because it's really that good. Um, it's nice that it's specifically about network marketing and yes, Allison, screenshot this puppy. <clears throat> but I can also post it on um, on the Team Fireball WhatsApp group um, so that you don't have to screenshot it. Um, but this one, I cannot recommend it enough. It is really excellent. And the reason why, I don't want to put down any of these other books because they're very good and there's a lot of excellent content, but um, like Carrie Dickey talks about in this one, the reason why she says this is the view from Venus is because so much in this business and any business in today's world, it's approached from the Mars standpoint. And by Mars, I mean, you know, not necessarily male, but that's how you, that's how most men approach business is a very, um, do it, do it, go, 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 push, 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 push. And that's really not what, not the, the focus that we need to be doing, or at least it's not what Carrie wants for our network marketing reputation. She wants it to have a softer reputation. She wants to change it. And I love that. I love it. That's why her team is called Team Heart. She wants us to be full of heart and full of love for others and not about get the next customer, get the next. You don't get it. You go out and you share. And that's, that's why I'm saying that this one is my number one um, suggestion for you guys out of this list. Number two is absolutely one of my favorite books ever. It was actually the very first book that I bought on Audible way back when. As soon as I graduated um, with my master's degree, I had heard about How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. and I read, I listened to that sucker over and over again on those long commutes. And it really changed my whole viewpoint on how I should be dealing with people. And um, I think I've told you guys before that when I was in grad school and well before I was in grad school, but definitely in grad school, I put on these blinders and I was very focused on what I was doing. I was so stressed out and freaked out about getting the getting my thesis done and getting the research finished and um I put my head down and I and I didn't look up and it took me a long time to figure out how to look up and one of the things that helped me was um Dale Carnegie's How to Win Friends and Influence People so that is my number two recommendation if you have not read that book 
please go read that book. It is, it, it, you owe yourself and you owe everyone around you to, to read that book. It is, um, it's got kind of an off-putting title because it's like almost a hundred years old. So winning friends sounds very fake um, these days, but he doesn't mean it that way. And influencing people also sounds very manipulative, but that's not the intent at all. Um, truly read that book. It's, it's incredible. Um, but a lot of these other ones, you guys have been very helpful. Rich Dad, Poor Dad was helpful to me. It helped me start to change my mind about um, how to, you know, how do I approach money and how will I um, approach the idea of leaving a legacy? Um, <clears throat> so all of these are really great, you guys. Um, I think Alice has recently read The Big Leap by Gay Hendricks, and that's a good one too. So um, again, I'll post this whole list on, on WhatsApp so you don't need to, to really try to scribble everything down because good grief, it's 33 books. <laughs> but if you find an, a book that is not on that list, would you please report it to me? Like if you read a, a different book and you find that it's really helping you for whatever reason uh, in the, the approach to this business, please let me know so that I can update the list. And that way, at some point in the future, we'll be able to share this again, go over, go over this again for new folks coming in who haven't got, had a chance to, to get this um, info for themselves. Uh, because, you know, we're going to be constantly changing. We're going to be constantly, uh, sorry, hush. <laughs> They're going crazy. Um, but I would love for any of you, if you um, have read any of these books or even a different one, if it's something that has changed your focus and made a, uh, an impact on you, if you would please get, uh, hop on, unmute yourself and, and share, I would love that. I'm gonna stop sharing so that we can see each other again. Who wants to go first? <laughs> Carol! So when I was part of another network marketing organization a long time ago, one of the books I read was How to Stop Worrying and Start Living. And I have to tell you that um, it was at the time when I was going through a lot of huge changes in my life that were very scary for me because I put my worth in my job which uh, we got went through a hostile takeover and I remember just dealing with a lot of anxiety and I read that book and it really really helped me oh that's wonderful Carol thank you for sharing yeah that's on the list <laughs> yeah, it's right on the list so that was why I was sharing. yeah it's really, you're right, it's really good. That's fabulous. Like, yeah, a lot of these books, you don't have to necessarily be in network marketing to appreciate them and for them to help you. It's just good stuff for humanity, right? And that's definitely one of those. Thanks so much. You know, just a quick note for an easy read for anybody. There's a book called, I think it's called Who Stole My Cheese or Who, are you familiar with it? It's about three mice going after cheese. And um, I'll try and find it for you. It's a super quick read, but it talks about trying to find your reward in the wrong place and how to go to the right place for your reward. I read that a really long time ago too, but it's really, a, it's a very easy read for anyone that hates to read. Sounds I awesome, read thanks. That, Carol, and I, that's short enough to read on a call. I nominate you and your beautiful British accent. <laughs> read that book on a call one time. <laughs> like, <laughs> so yeah, it's a good book, isn't it? Yes, I love it, I love it. And I was going to say too, um, 
there's a book and I, I think it's in my bathroom because that's where I read. Um, <laughs> but there were so many good nuggets from it. So I'm going to go find it because it's been a while, but I, I have read the Carrie Dickey, but like Carrie, I used to actually give that cop that uh, view from Venus book by Carrie Dickey to all of my new distributors. Like, I think when you sign on a new distributor, pick a favorite book, you know, that's going to help. Pe yes. I, that, and that was my book because it was, she was also like, you know, it, it was, she's part of life manage. And I felt like, you know, her energy and like everything she shared was so from the heart. I think it's like such a great thing to be able to give a new distributor, like something to get started right away on mindset because that is the thing that's going to kill people the most in this business is like not having the right mindset so if you can start them off with some like something you can put in their hand and be like you know open a page you know highlight something like leave like notes in it for them like encouragement you know it's like such a great thing to be able to do and that I used to do that like um for my new distributors when, um, like a, a long time ago. Um, and anyway, I think I gave away my last copy of that book. So I don't even have a copy anymore. So I need to buy some more copies of it. But, um, also, you know, Eric Worre has so many great, incredible training. GoPro book is great. Um, and uh, when I find that book in my bathroom, I'll post that because I don't think it's on your list, Christy, but it's really, really good. It just teaches you the importance of the little things. And it's so much stuff I, I need to work on about being a good friend, being like somebody, you know, because that's what it's all about. People just want to know you care you know, and, um, and it, it's kind of like how to win, maybe it is how to win friends and influence people. It might be that it's like, but it's like, um, you know, just, it's just teaching you how to, um, connect with people in ways and like, you know, things I'm like, Oh, that's like such a thing. Like I've never, it's like being thoughtful in ways. Like if you're not super like intentional, you might not think of these things, but it gives you like, a list that that reminds you of like this may seem like totally insignificant to you but would mean like so much to another person so um but it might be that Dale Carnegie book but I'm gonna go look at my bathroom and I'll let you know hey, thanks Allison <laughs> you'll have to post that in WhatsApp too <laughs> all right Alice do you have one that you wanted to share Yeah, sure. I just, this one, I don't even know how good it is because I read it 30 years ago. <laughs> so I want to share this one because it was the first like mindset book that I ever read. And, you know, in school, you just read the books they tell you to read and it's all, you know, literature or, you know, stuff that you learn in school. They never, they never ask us to read anything on mindset. You know, it's all just books for that you want to read or books that are part of English literature that we shouldn't, you know, go a whole lifetime without reading. And um, I had a horse train one of our horses. And so we would always break our young horses, get them to the regional level. And then when we get to the national level, we'd always get some help and, I remember having to go to this like two week camp at this, I, I think he was in Oklahoma. I can't even remember where he was. His name was Bob Hart. And I remember going there to ride my horse and learn his way so that I could, you know, like learn those finishing touches. And the first thing he did was give us a book. And he said, you have to read this before you show up. And the name of the book was That Winning Feeling. Um, and it had like this lady in dressage attire and it was about eventing and jumping. And I was like, what's this got to do with my Western horse, you know? And it was really interesting. And I was like, okay, he said, I got to read the book. I'm going to read the book. And I start reading the book and it talks about like visualizing yourself in the ring, like visualizing every single step, 
what your horse is doing, what you're feeling, what your seat feels like, you know, like every single, like what you smell, like is the arena air conditioned, you know, like all the different things and, and just visualizing the entire class or the entire performance from start to finish and everything going absolutely perfectly. And I remember thinking, this is silly. There's going to be some kid that's going to be running down the bleachers, make a bunch of noise, and my horse is going to freak out. And I'm like, how do I visualize that not happening? <laughs> you know, and I remember thinking, how is what I'm thinking about right now before bed going to affect my, per my performance later? And but I was like, I got to read the book. He said, I got to read the book. So Anyway, I read the book. It made an impression. 30 years later, I still remember that book. I had to get my mom to go to my bedroom at her house and pull the book off the shelf because I couldn't remember like all the details. But I remembered the color of the book. I knew exactly which one it was. She found it right away. Um, but it was really interesting. She sent me a picture of the book and it's that winning feeling by Jane Savoy. And it says a new approach to writing using Psygo psycho cybernetics and so then I looked up psycho cybernetics because I haven't really heard that term before and um, it was coined by Dr. Maxwell Maltz and it's steering your mind towards a productive useful goal and I get that you know like I feel like if you know where you're going you can communicate that better to your horse um, so it was just really neat because when you were talking about books that influenced me, I just went back, you know, to when I was like 13 years old. Okay. So it was more than 30 years ago, 30 <laughs> ish, you know, and, um, and it's just really cool how you may not remember the details of all the books that you read, but it sticks with you and it does, you know, affect your mindset for life. So I just, I think it's something that's missing, you know, in our education. And it's really cool that we focus on it with this industry. So thank you, Christy. Well, that was awesome, Alice. I wrote that down. I'm going to have to look that up. That sounds really great. And, you know, Olympic athletes are using that, those techniques these days. So it's become very mainstream. So that's really cool. Yeah. Oh, I told it, Alice. I, I've used that technique on surgeries, like when, um, cause I, you know, I do a lot of like routine surgeries, but if I have like a surgery, I'm not like super proficient at and I have to study about I was telling her like, you know, way back, I would, I actually, I would like read it, study it, all the anatomy and I would go to bed and I like visual, I would visualize it, all the muscles, the, the direction they, they went, how I was going to cut it and like, it works, totally works. Like I, I would visualize it and then I would usually dream about it. And then like the next day, it was just like, yeah, so familiar. So I, I totally think that's a, that's a big thing when you like need to need to do complete something and you're like unsure of how you like, you have to put that in your mind, like create that picture. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks you guys so much for sharing. I know we've gone over, but I think that was worth it. <laughs> oh, great guys. Thanks so much. And oh yeah, one, don't forget this coming weekend, we're changing clocks. And I don't know if y'all have heard this. I was reading an article the other day that in, in the state of Georgia, this is the last time that we're going to be turning our clocks back for fall. Did you all know that? I no. had no idea. I had no last idea. Year, last year, they somebody signed something that said that um, uh, we're going to go on to daylight savings time in spring of 2023. And we're going to stay on. We're not going to change our clocks anymore after that. Good. I hate it. I hate it too, but you guys, it's going to be really, really confusing <laughs> because is. we're going to be like, no, we're on, we're not on Eastern standard time. We're on Eastern daylight time, but how many hours is it, is it between us and Nevada now? I don't know. Oh, it's going to be like when you were in three and you were on <laughs> But you know what? 
I think yeah. Nevada, Nevada, is Nevada doing the same thing, Jenny? I have no idea. Well, I think a lot of states are, are moving to that because they say the reason they did it in the first place is so antiquated that it's not like really useful anymore. Right. So I think um, like Arizona doesn't change their clocks. No, they right. Don't. But they're on standard time. They're all mountain. They're on mountain. mountain standard on time. The us. We were right. so confused. I had no idea. <laughs> Well, but they're not, you know what? Right now they're on Pacific time. So well, that's but they're on mountain time. Yeah, that's because they're on <laughs> Pacific they're daylight time, time which is mountain standard time. Yeah, they they're mountain time, purpose. but they don't change their clocks. Yeah. None of this makes any sense. <laughs> no, no. I think what you have to do is you have to text people and say, what time is it where you are? <laughs> Yes. I, just Google, I just Google it. I Google it. I do that all the time. I just say, what time is it in Atlanta? Yeah. And it will tell me. Yeah, it's crazy. Well, England that's did theirs. Well, this England did theirs this last weekend. So now my sister and I are seven hours apart until next weekend. And then we'll be next eight weekend. Hours apart. <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> I can't it all. all I just hate off work and it's pitch black dark oh like, i hate that too but i don't uh, think we're going to get away from that just because of winter time but yeah. it will be nice to you know have that little bit of extra yeah i hope yeah you just can't but, work you gotta you gotta get off work at three I, yes uh, <laughs> well none too. of us will be working I, soon I'm sorry, but I cannot get off work at dark. No, <laughs> not get that. Uh, all, all right, right, ladies. Good night. Good night, everybody.